Located at the ammunition jetty on the east side, EcoWave is believed to be the first ever renewable wave energy system in Europe to feed back into the electricity grid. Hello, my name is Ina Braverman and I'm the co-founder of EcoWave Power. Uh, my background is actually not uh, related to wave energy. Uh, I studied political science and English literature in uh, Haifa University in Israel. But uh, my biggest passion at the moment is definitely wave energy and definitely the, the exciting and innovative project that we're doing here in Gibraltar and in the future in additional locations in the world. Hello Gibraltar and uh hopefully the world. My name is David Leb, and I'm CEO and uh, co-founder of EcoWave Power. Uh, I'm, we're really excited about what's happened here so far with the company, but really we're really excited about what's happened here in Gibraltar as to regards to our installa installation. For those of you who don't know what EcoWave Power is, we make uh, electricity from uh, ocean waves, and we're excited about what the future will bring here in Gibraltar, and and the rest of the world. So basically our system is very simple and easy. We connect to existing structures, piers, breakwaters, exactly like uh, the ammunition jetty where we're standing now. Uh, the floaters, as you can see, as you pointed out, are going up and down with the movements of the waves or the swell in the Gibraltar case. And they're pushing the hydro cylinders. The hydro cylinders are basically like a pump. It is sending biodegradable oil into the accumulators that are located inside the container that we will see a bit later. Uh, this pressure is creating the electricity that is later generated to the grid. So as you can see the system is very simple, it's very easy, uh, we have an on-site maintenance strategy which means that you don't need divers, you don't need chips in order to maintain the floaters. Basically the people just go down, make their painting works or uh, reinforce the bolts or whatever is needed at the time of maintenance and come back up. Another advantage of connecting the floaters in such a way is the fact that you can uh, make a storm protection mechanism. When the, when the waves are too high for the system to handle, which is not the case today, uh, then the floaters just automatically rise above the water level and lock in an upward position. Then basically the floaters are protected throughout the whole storm and only when the storm uh, passes they commence operation. Fantastic. Um, so so th that is an ex in extreme weather situations, but I suppose a, a, a sort of a, a gentle storm is, is almost perfect, isn't it? Definitely. Storm of four or five meters wave height, which is, I'm not sure how gentle it is, but for our equipment it's quite gentle, is perfect for it because then you can produce obviously maximum capacity. So a storm tomorrow, for example, would be perfect because today you generate almost zero electricity because obviously there's no waves. So if tomorrow you generate 100% capacity, then your average will, will be 50%, which is perfect for renewables. Well, we were basically looking around for some locations, possible locations of uh, installing one of our first grid-connected power stations. We had already installed uh, uh, non-grid-connected units in Ukraine and in Tel Aviv, Israel and uh, Gibraltar was one of the locations that we approached and the reception was quite warm and quite welcoming. Uh, we offered to, to install our, uh, our, our wave energy power station in Gibraltar. Um, they asked us what was involved in it, uh, saw what we've done before and, and the government liked what we, what we had to offer. They had also committed to the European Union to uh, supply uh, by 2020 20% 20 of renewable energy um, to Gibraltar. So they decided to give us a chance and we were happy to take it. And that's how it started. And from then on, the relationship was great. Uh, they helped us a lot. They made it as easy as possible. There was no financial investment from their side other than uh, connecting to the grid. to the grid, which was which was really helpful. And now we're anxious to take this what we got now and expand it and make it bigger and uh, live up to the commitment that we've made 
to the Gibraltar government and for the Gibraltar government to live up to the commitment that they've made to uh, the European Union and the, uh, the citizens of Gibraltar. The government signed an agreement with EcoWave Power back in 2014. The company is from Israel. It works to harness wave energy and convert it into low-cost, clean electricity. The government says the agreement forms part of its plan for increasing the level of renewable energies in Gibraltar and moving away from dependence on fossil fuels. It would be big and exciting in any circumstances. At last, we're seeing the grid fed with renewable energy, something that was long overdue. As soon as we were elected, we started the process of making this a reality. But it's even more exciting than that. This is the first time in the whole of Europe that a renewable wave energy system is linked into an electricity grid. The Gibraltarians are here pioneers in our partnership with EcoWave Power, an Israeli company, so something to be very, very proud of indeed. Very exciting. I think we've shown that our commitment, our vision dating back to 2011 and, and even further back is something we're willing to, to commit to and we're willing and able to achieve. It's the first wave energy plant connected to the grid anywhere in Europe. Very proud moment for Gibraltar and for all of us who, all of us who genuinely care for the environment. And this is only the beginning because, of course, wave energy is one of the potential sources of renewable energy in Gibraltar. We are standing in a blazingly sunny day. I'm hoping that we'll have something to announce in respect of harnessing the power of the sun soon also. The technology is changing and improving all of the time. So watch this space. I think that this is a very important first step. We will be increasing the output to 5 megawatts, hopefully even 10 megawatts, which would be either 15 or, or 30 percent of our average needs. So I'm very confident that we'll be able to achieve our aims and hopefully even exceed it. This plant itself is due to expand and we're working with other providers of marine energy. We're also about to also uh, commit to other renewable sources like extending solar power. So I'm very hopeful that uh, we will see many changes in the coming months and certainly in the next couple of years. Um, we've had some pretty foul weather over the, over the winter. And I'm happy to say that your installation has survived. And that's, that's, that's a great thing, okay? That was my biggest reservation. All the work that, been, that was done culminated recently in March when they started, we started doing the, the testing and commissioning test on the plant. Everything went well. The plant is now commissioned. All the safety parameters and um, conform to those of the Gibraltar Electricity Authority. And just to say that we are very glad that you now form part of our generation park. There's other things going on. There's a traditional power station which is clean, not green, but clean. But I think yours is the first of many more green projects to come. And I, for one, will be pioneering it. Thank you. Thank you. These are the kind of projects that the European Commission is keen to, on assisting with European structural and investment funds. The Europe 2020 strategy is about delivering growth that is smart through more effective investments in education, research and innovation. Sustainable, thanks to a decisive move towards a low carbon economy and inclusive with a strong emphasis on job creation. One of Europe's 2020 targets is that 20% of all the energy utilized should come from renewable sources. In innovation, the European Union is refocusing research, development and innovation policy into major challenges facing our society like climate change, energy and resource efficiency. It is also engaged in strengthening every link in the innovation chain from blue sky research to commercialization. Uh, from what I've said, it seems pretty obvious that EcoWave Power Project ticks all these boxes. Therefore, on behalf of the EU Commission and the EU Programme Secretariat in Gibraltar, I wish every success to EcoWave Power. May it expand and produce lots more renewable energy, and I hope that we're able to collaborate in future expansion of this project. Thank you very much. The government is trying to encourage increasingly the use of renewable energy. We are looking at other sources as well. Um, and trying to encourage people to come forward and, and bring these projects to us. In the last four and a half years, we've been through a lot. People were coming with these magic black boxes. They told us, you give us some funding and we will give you the power. They never came up with anything. Nothing ever worked. This is clearly working. 
Um, we have to look for innovative solutions, and Gibraltar is very pleased to have attracted this kind of interest. Gibraltar is here awaiting more and more investment for different uh, types of technologies from around the world, and this today, as I say, seals the fact that we are serious in what we want to do. We're very excited. It's a new project. It's innovative technology. And I think one of the biggest benefits that we're drawing at a personal and professional level in the department is the fact that it's putting Gibraltar on the map within marine renewables, which is a rapidly emerging field of research and of energy deployment. Uh, Ina, we've walked in a uh, short distance from the jetty. Mm -hmm. Tell us uh, what we're looking at in here. So here we can basically see the accumulation of the pipes. These are all the pipes that are coming from the floater. The floaters, when they're starting operation, they're drawing oil, the biodegradable oil that we talked about before, from this oil tank. This oil tank has oil without any pressure. So when the floaters are going up and down with the movement of the waves, they push the oil from here into the accumulators. The accumulators are filled with partially oil, partially nitrogen. The mixture of the two ingredients basically creates very strong pressure that ranges between 50 bar in low waves to 160 bar, which is the highest pressure we work in, in high waves. Then this pressure used to turn the hydro motor. Here we can see we have a smaller hydro motor and a bigger hydro motor for larger waves. And the, the hydro motor is turning the generators, which we can see here by Siemens in gray. So the electricity that is being generated here is being transferred through inverters into the main power cable connection box, which is basically our connection to the Gibraltar Electric Authority. From here, we basically sell the electricity to the grid. Can I ask you um, how mature this technology is? How many years has it been developing the generators, the, the, the various connections? So the technology, the company exists since 2011, so the technology has been developing for five and a half years approximately. As you may know, the development never stops because all the time we want to innovate and add new uh, automation and new ingredients that makes uh, the electricity output higher and that improves the workability of our components. But the good thing in the technology is that it is very simple. As you can see here from the explanation about how it works, the ingredients, the main parts in the technology, like the generators, the accumulators, are off-the-shelf parts. Uh, what's unique in it is basically how we put them together and how we control them through the automation. But the parts themselves are very simple, and this makes our technology, first of all, reliable, and second of all, very cost-efficient. How important is it to have technology, uh, renewable technology, which is cost efficient in a market which uh, has been perhaps a little bit slow to, to achieve that? I think N not not wave technology, yeah. but but renewables generally have a reputation yeah. for, for not being cheap enough. No? Exactly. So some renewable technology actually already decreased cost. For example, uh, when China entered into the solar market, the prices of solar panels dropped actually to about one million euro per one megawatt, which is the lowest that it's ever been. So the goal of wave energy is now to be able to compete or maybe even be cheaper than solar, than wind, and other uh, renewable energy technology that have been commercialized already. Uh, in the wave energy market, the biggest criticism that this field received from investors, from governments, from potential partners is two things. One, the reliability of the equipment. Uh, most technologies that are existent today went into the offshore, which is four or five kilometers into the sea. And the prices there are very, very high. And the reliability there is very, very low, obviously, because you get storm of 20 meters, which sink ships. So obviously, a stationary uh, wave energy device can survive such storms. And uh, so what we did here basically is very innovative because first of all, we connect to breakwaters. Our maintenance is very cheap. Our construction cost is very low. Our generation cost is very low as well. And thereby, we're, therefore, we're becoming uh, commercially viable and highly competitive with our other renewable technologies. I suppose in order for it to be um, economically viable, you need to generate enough electricity. Mm -hmm. You're confident that you can do so here? At the moment, according to the studies that are being published about wind, about wind technology and about solar technology, the maximum that a solar, solar panel can generate is about 18% in efficiency. One eight. One eight, eighteen percent And the maximum that uh, wind can generate, in average, taking upon a yearly data, mm -hmm. is about 40%. Four so zero. Four zero, exactly. So this is your competitors. You have 
solar, which is very popular and which have proven to bring return of investment to its investors, mm -hmm. only provides one eighth, 18 percent of uh, of the time clean electricity. So that's our major competitor. If we can provide 20, 25, 50, 60, then definitely we're becoming very commercially viable. And what is your target? In every location, we have a different target. Uh, our target depends on two main things. The, thing, the first thing is the availability of waves, because obviously the more waves we have in the location, the more electricity we produce. And the second thing is the feed-in tariff that we're getting from the government. So in some location, we have availability of only 10%, which is very low. But the feed-in tariff that is provided by the government is so high that it becomes cost efficient to our investors to put money into our projects. In other locations like Chile, Scotland, where the availability is very high, it's 80 to 90 percent of the time, you can accept a feed-in tariff that is lower and produce a lot of the time and then still be very attractive to investors. So Gibraltar is paying high feed-in tariffs and therefore you don't need uh, to have waves for that often? Gibraltar actually doesn't pay such a high feed-in tariff because the Gibraltar at the moment pays for diesel, it's a subsidized price for the people that live here, for the citizens, but I know that it pays around 27, 28 pence per kilowatt hour. Uh, we're getting a much lower price, we're getting a non-subsidized price, and I think the goal of the government by doing so is in order to show to the population that uh, renewable energy can be cost efficient and doesn't require necessarily a subsidy in order to be attractive. Uh, Ina, you, you mentioned earlier that there, there's obviously a process of um, understanding what the waves are doing at any one moment yep. and, and sort of responding um, with, by setting up the machines in, yep. in this generation uh, system accordingly. Mm -hmm. How much of that is automatic? How much of that do you need to control actively? So all our system, as you can see here in the automation scre screen, is completely automatic. Uh, we can control the system from far. We don't need any person to be sitting in the power station actually controlling it. It does everything independently. So through the system, for example, you can see these arrows. They are responsible for bringing the floaters up and down during storms. So it can be done manually by just pressing a button, or it can be done automatically through the system when the system sensors recognize that the waves are too high for the system to handle. Other than that, uh, you can see these numbers is the pressure that is currently being accumulated through the waves. So although the waves, as we've seen before, are very, very low, uh, still we're able to reach to 50, 51 bars of pressure in the floaters that are better located, So, which is a good thing. Other than that, we can control here the inverters, the generator, the every single part of the system. And to the most important thing is to, to transmit reliable electricity into the electric grid because there's high importance to how clean the electricity that you transmit is delivered to the grid. How important is, uh, how important a role does technology play in all of this to ask sort of a, a, an obvious question but you know how much um, advantage is there in having um, market leading technology in each part of this system? Listen, being an Israeli company, a technology is a very important thing to us because uh, many countries say that Israel is a startup nation and that Israel, although is very poor on resources, through the use of technology was, was able to develop. And for example, in Israel, they never found even one diamond. But the diamond bourse in Israel is one of the famous in the world in uh, uh, cleaning and working on the diamonds themselves. So this shows that technology in Israel is a very, very important thing for us. And in this power station, obviously, also very important because, as I mentioned earlier, we mainly use off-the-shelf parts, but the way they're integrated and the way they're being controlled for a smart automation system is what makes it happen and what makes it cheap and reliable. So how many people, uh, roughly, have worked on, on putting this system together and what sort of expertise did they bring to it? So obviously our engineering team, which uh, I thank a lot for their efforts, they're sitting in the office every night with me till 10 p.m. and working very hard and don't see their wives and their children, so that's very nice of them. And the subcontractors that basically, electrical subcontractors, hydraulic subcontractors, mechanical, civil engineering, there's a big group of people that put efforts to make all this happen and they all put so much effort in the belief that it will become a much bigger thing. In this case, this is a 100 kilowatt station which will expand to 5 megawatts. So definitely they all want to get involved, they believe in it, they believe in the green future for their children, but also in the fact that they can make money from renewables. And that's a very important emphasis that we put in our technology and development efforts. Um, it's a vast resource and we don't fully understand it yet in the sense that there's a lot of potential which I think we haven't really um, 
found is probably the right word. There's deep ocean currents and there's wave, and we're looking actively at both. Um, with wave, which is, and again, EcoWave is, is basically focusing on waves, we are already getting some very fruitful results. We've had a lot of studies where we look at wave dynamics in Gibraltar that have been done in the past. Um, but one of the things that we found already is that we're generating electricity, for example, with just 30 centimeters of wave height. So it's not even a wave as such, it's more like what we call swell locally. Uh, and that's very, very encouraging. So we picked a site in Gibraltar that we know that in most times of the year, regardless of the prevailing winds, has that little bit of swell. We're already working hard to identify further sites in Gibraltar where, again, regardless of the prevailing winds, has that sort of bump in the water, that little kink, which is what we need. And hopefully uh, the future is going to be sort of very blue and very wet in a good way. Well, let's ask you now about the, sure. the partnership with the Department of the Environment and Climate Change, whose uh, logo we see uh, on the generator container behind us. Um, what is the nature of your relationship with the Gibraltar government? Well, the nature of the relationship is, is to work together and to make this happen. And since the day we met up with them, um, really it's been a... So, so far, it's been a pleasurable experience. It, 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 was, it was easy for it was easy to work with, uh, with um, with people that kind of have this, that have the same vision as to regards to renewables in the world. So they made uh, licensing, they made uh, the ability construction permits, they made everything that that might be difficult in other places. Um, really easy for us to do because they wanted it to happen just as bad. Uh, we get along brilliantly, I'm happy to say. As you say, it is a partnership. We're both working together for a greater environmental good. Obviously, they feel that Gibraltar is an area which has the marine resource available and it's worth investing in. We feel that, obviously, we want to meet our targets, not just because it's, it's sort of um, legally enforced upon us, but also because it's the right thing to do. And it shows that Gibraltar can really add its grain of sand to the bigger environmental challenges being faced. So we've enjoyed a very good working relationship, we share information, we discuss issues of concern and basically in addition to us with GEA as well, the Gibraltar Electricity Authority, um, it's been a sort of a win-win partnership all along I have to say. My, back, my background is marketing uh, but in about 2005, 2006 I bought a surf camp in, uh, in Panama and spending a lot of time in the surf camp make, uh, and watching the endless waves coming in and coming out uh, made me think that we can do something other than just surf from, uh, uh, from, from waves and that's where the idea came and uh, that's where the idea came from and from there we're here now in 2016 and hopefully we'll be here for uh, years to come. Welcome back to Viewpoint. Tonight we're focusing on a project which takes the energy of the waves around the rock and converts that into electricity for our TV sets, lights and kitchens. The water in the sea rises and falls because of the waves on the surface. Wave machines use the kinetic energy in this movement to drive electricity generators. Initially, EcoWave will be providing 0.1 megawatts of energy, but the hope is that this will rise to 50 times that, 5 megawatts. 5 megawatts would cover 15% of Gibraltar's overall consumption of electricity. David, can I ask you, um, diesel, fossil fuels generally, uh, gas now increasingly, are relatively um, developed technologies or, or fuels, I should say, um, which lend themselves to, to, to sort of power generation for cities. Um, we've been doing this for many decades. What's the incentive to move away from fossil fueled power stations? Well, it's something we've got to do. I mean, we can't, I guess, uh, we cannot uh, mortgage out. Uh, our children's future and the, the, the generations, generations to come by continue on using uh, fossil fuels. We need to wean ourselves away from fossil fuels. There's not going to be uh, a silver bullet which is going to save uh, 
the world and replace fossil fuels tomorrow, it's got to be done slowly and steadily and smartly. And we got to make sure that uh, that it's uh, uh, profitable or it compares to what fossil fuels prices and jobs that it creates right now. So what needs to be done in the renewable for, for renewable energies to to, to grow and to, to grow in percentages so that in 20 years, 30% uh, of uh, energy is created by renewables and in 40 years, uh, 50 or 60% and hopefully we get at some point to 90 or 100% of, of weaning ourselves away from uh, uh, fossil fuels is what we need to do is we need to uh, make smarter ways to make electricity, make diverse ways of making renewable energies, uh, whether it be wave, whether it be uh, offshore wave, nearshore wave, uh, whether it be solar, wind, uh, bio, uh, biofuels, uh, um, geothermal, algae, we need to develop a whole array of uh, renewable energies to replace the fossil fuels which are going to uh, which are destroying and eating away at our planet and our wildlife s slowly but like i said we can't replace it in one day it's uh, or in a year or two years it's going to take time and uh, our wave energy generation system will be part of the mix just like other types of renewable energies will be and to borrow a quote from uh, Dr. Liesl Torres, uh, we, we, uh, Gibraltar and, and ourselves challenges other uh, countries, other jurisdictions, other companies uh, to inspire and uh, do the same. Well, what is happening is, uh, is you know, we're, we're polluting our oceans, we're polluting our waters, we're polluting our air, uh, we're slowly creating the, uh, the earth to, uh, to warm up. We're losing our, uh, uh, you know, our Arctic shields. We're losing, losing our big ice, uh, you know, big icebergs and everything else that's keeping the, the, the world at a, at a steady uh, temperature. And uh, we need to get away from that. We need that to change. Uh, as to regards to uh, what's happened in the last 10 years since, uh, since the Al Gore uh, documentary, a, a lot has changed. I mean, there's a lot more uh, solar, there's a lot more wind. Uh, people are developing wave, they're developing uh, algae, there's more geothermal, there is more. But we need to get to a higher percentage. We need to get to uh, 70, uh, 50, 60, 70 percent renewables in order for us to make a change for, for generations to come. Okay, um, Ina, if I, can, if I can ask you, David's mentioned the um, profitability, mm -hmm. uh, you did previously as well. Um, how important is it to, to, to make sure that green technology is not just good for the planet, but it works within our current economic model? Uh, it's very important to prove that uh, green technology is, is not only green, it can also make green money. So uh, that's one of the sentences that David always says, uh, because again, when we're uh, looking at traditional technologies, the general population is used to a certain price range for the construction, for the generation, and if uh, renewable energy technology, as good as it will be, comes and cannot compete with these traditional uh, numbers, it's very, very difficult to have it uh, commercialized. I think also the problem in commercialized commercializing new renewable energy technologies of different types is the fact that people don't understand that the coal, the gas, the oil is an ending resources. All the studies are showing that in 100, 120, 150 years, depends on the resource, we will not have any more oil, coal, gas and other type of uh, resources. And when they're looking at these numbers, they're saying to themselves, well, in 100 years, I'm dead already, so I'm not here even, so I don't care what's going to happen with the world. So they feel like they have a big range of time in order to find something, to make up something, and they're not putting enough efforts. A lot of countries, a lot of, uh, a lot of the population is not stressed enough. And this is something that I think that needs to change, and it will definitely change with the commercialization with renewable energy technologies. When renewable will come and say, I'm not only clean, I'm not only good for the environment, but I'm also cost efficient. But you're saying that your technology is there already? 
Definitely, because uh, at the moment our technology is, uh, as I said, successfully competing with the prices of solar and wind. Uh, our construction cost as well as our generation cost per kilowatt hour is low. Uh, it's definitely low in comparison to our competing wave energy technology companies. And we hope to, the more we go farther, the more power stations like this one we construct, the more we're going to lower the price of our generation and uh, construction. But obviously fossil fuels are still cheaper. It's not, as m it's not much cheaper than wave energy at the moment because we put a very high emphasis on, again, building on existing structures, so that's why we don't have to build our own platforms in the middle of the sea, which are very expensive. We put a big emphasis on using off-the-shelf products, which are already available, which traditional energies also use the same generators and the same equipment that we use, so the price is pretty much low. So at the moment, the only thing that can lower our price even more is the fact that the technology will commercialize, meaning that instead of buying one generator in a high price, I can buy 100 generators in a much lower price. And then the price can be completely competitive with the traditional energy. So uh, are you guys expecting um, a very significant growth in the coming years? Are you uh, expecting, if you excuse the pun, a wave of interest on the back of this project? <laughs> Uh, we already see a wave of interest. Uh, if you could uh, go into my email box, for example, of the company's mailbox, you would see hundreds, if not thousands, of inquiries from all over the world. We have uh, deals that we're working in in Chile, in India, in Thailand, in the UK, in the United States. Every country that has a significant coastline basically approaches us and already tries to understand in terms of the governmental level and in terms of the private sector, how can they implement it in their own home. So there's definitely a growing interest and on all the studies that are about this subject are showing that by 2030 uh, the wave energy should completely commercialize, which is a number that we never got before. I'd also like to add what she said in the question that you asked as to regards to uh, the, the price being lower of fossil fuels. Yeah, it's lower when I go to the pump right now and I'm paying... Uh, 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 X amount of dollars per liter, but you're not taking into consideration uh, not just the pollution, but the sicknesses and the diseases and uh, and, and the, the social benefits I need to pay out. So there's a there's, there's a big price to pay as we're using uh, um, as we're using fossil fuels. Whereas uh, with renewables, if the price is the same or a little bit more, it, it, it's even more cost efficient because there's no social benefits to pay for uh, people that get sick. No. No, no, no pollution, uh, no environmental disasters, and nothing, no cleanups to do. So, the price in in the in, in the in the medium term for uh, for uh, for uh, renewable energies has come down drastically. So uh, before you go on to the, the other question, then what yeah. you're saying is that there are a lot of um, factors in in the use of uh, fossil fuels which are externalized from the pricing model. And really, if you look at it more holistically, actually fossil fuels is uh, or are having um, a more significant cost on society than the price at the pump suggests. Exactly. I mean, you know, uh, uh, like I said, there's diseases, there's cleanups, uh, there's pollution, there's dirt, there's dust, there's smog, uh, there's hospitals, there's doctors, and that's just to name a few. I'm sure there's a, a lot more to, uh, to add to. How confident are you of being able to uh, obtain 20% of Gibraltar's electricity needs by 2020 with renewables? Um, very confident. I think in Gibraltar, because we work in island mode uh, in terms of power generation, we need to have a mixed bag of measures and that is the approach that the government has taken. We actually have online a renewable energy strategy which we sent to the Commission as part of our, our due diligence on the matter. And we very much say that there. Obviously, government is building an LNG plant. That's obviously part of that mixed bag. Um, wave marine resources are a big one, and obviously solar is the obvious one. So the department is working very, very hard on all of these fronts. We've just uh, finished sort of an assessment of the weight of the solar potential of Gibraltar, and this has all been done in-house with our scientists. And we're now hoping to push in the next 12 months some sort of big improvements in solar energy as well. So because we have to, as I say, have a mixed bag, we need to have different sources. Gibraltar is too small. And unlike big nations who have an, almost an infinite grid with countless sources, we need to have various options so that at any one point in time we can meet what we call the base load and the basic demand of Gibraltar. And I think having this sort of mixed bag approach will ensure that we can do that. 
and it'll ensure sort of greater sustainability in terms of the deliver the deliverability sorry of um, renewable energy uh, you mentioned the solar study what does it tell us about um, how much energy Gibraltar could be uh, taken from the sun um, solar will undoubtedly take us the greatest part of our way towards our 20 percent target as anybody who lives in Jib knows that even in winter we've got very good weather. Additionally, the way solar technology is emerging, you don't really need sunlight, you just need daylight. Because one of the common questions that we get asked is, oh, Levant to cloud, how sort of useful is that going to be? It obviously will affect the output, but solar, as I say, is, is it's going to take us more than half of our way there. We've had to think outside the box, we've had to be innovative. As you know, Gibraltar doesn't have an excess of land, so we can't have massive solar farms like you do in, in Spain or in Morocco. But we're, we're being innovative, we're looking at government roof space, uh, government buildings, and looking at feeding into the local grid, uh, either in low voltage into the surrounding area, or eventually once all the infrastructure works have been done to our little mini grid, which is what we're going to end up with, feeding directly high voltage into the grid. So some very exciting times ahead, I think. Um, you'd excuse, you'd forgive somebody uh, who's looked at a lot of the developments in recent years and noticed that there hasn't been a, a great deal of solar. Uh, you'd forgive them for being a bit surprised by that. Is there anything that uh, you can read into that and is, is that going to change, do you think? I think the change is, is already occurring. There's legislation that's pushing buildings increasingly in building development and this is European legislation to be new, nearly zero energy. So a lot of the buildings that are come, going to come on stream from now on need to be nearly zero energy and they're only going to achieve this if they include some form of micro-renewables um, on site. I think as well increasingly we're seeing that the Development and Planning Commission is putting stronger conditions on development going forward because they, they do appreciate the need for us to really push this renewable factor. So yeah, unfortunately in the past it hasn't sort of um, emerged at the pace that my department and I would have liked but going forward I think increasingly we are seeing that trend. But even the recent past, no? I mean even sort of some of the more recent government projects haven't seen solar yeah, panels. The facility, they haven't got the panels on there yet but the infrastructure has been laid. So in the recent government projects the roof space has been inclined in the right way and the provision has been made for those facilities to be incorporated. So the panels might just come at a later date. You know, we've heard David mention there both the fact that um, you're looking to expand from the current setup um, 50 times bigger to, to 5 megawatts uh, and also the fact that you're looking at other locations to achieve this in Gibraltar. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Uh, definitely. So since we came to Gibraltar, since we signed the PPA here in June 2014... That's a power purchase agreement? Power purchase agreement, definitely. Uh, our goal was to create a significant amount of electricity, create something that would make an impact. So the first phase that we constructed is the 100 kilowatt in order to show the government that we can uh, safely uh, connect to the local electrical grid because never in the past a renewable energy sent it electricity to the grid, so obviously both parties had to check the influence on the grid. Uh, but the big goal that we have is definitely doing the 5 megawatt, which is 15% of Gibraltar's current consumption. We're considering several sites, uh, among of which are on the west side is the old MOD uh, jetty that is currently not being used for anything or a, a new marina that is supposed to be constructed on the east side. So we definitely hope that one of these sites will be suitable for our uh, future expansion. I think it's also important to use uh, these kinds of sites because uh, until uh, Echo Wave Power came to Gibraltar, the ammunition jetty was pretty much, pretty much a neglected site. Nobody knew it exists, nobody ever visited it. We had about 100 guests in our opening ceremony. A lot of them were from Gibraltar. And they said, whoa, I never knew that it's even here. I never saw this jetty before. And uh, I think that taking such sites that are not being used for anything and uh, redir redirecting them to be used as something beneficial for the environment is very important. And it's something that would also assist in the promotion of renewables, that people see that it's not only green technology, green energy, it's also attractive and visually pleasant. Um, notwithstanding, a growth of times 50 uh, is very ambitious, isn't it? 
Uh, people would say it's ambitious because obviously, again, it's 50 times the scale that we have now. But from our point of view, it's not so ambitious because uh, we build the system in uh, such a way that it is modular. So, for example, if I want to build a 50 megawatt station now, which is huge, which is a project that we're working in uh, Zhejiang province in China at the moment, where the electricity needs are obviously higher, then we just install 50 units of one megawatt. So there's no risk in scalability. You just take one unit and you may copy paste the number of times that you need it and then you produce the electricity safely to the grid. Is there space in Gibraltar? I mean, what, are we talking about uh, basically whatever the footprint of this size is 50 times over? There's definitely place because, as you can see, the biggest equipment, the bigger installation is the floaters. And the floaters are not located on a space that is dedicated for people to live on. It's not uh, on prime real estate. It's located in breakwaters that are not used for anything other than breaking the waves. Uh, it's actually even good for the breakwaters because uh, the destructive power of the waves are being captured by the floaters, which are then transmitting it to clean electricity instead of just ruining the breakwater. So definitely there is space for it in Gibraltar. Even the, the equipment here, you can see it fits into a standard con shipping container, which is about six meters long. It's not a big space. Obviously for a bigger power station, we will need a bit more space. But still, it's something that is easily achievable, I think. And with the correct architectural planning, you can make it not just units one next to the other, but going upwards like a building, and then it would not take too much space. Um, you've spoken there, you know, about a project in China. Mm -hmm. uh, EcoWave is, is a company that is operating worldwide? Uh, at the moment, we have three subsidiaries. We have EcoWave Power China, that is working on a 50 megawatt project. We have EcoWave Power Mexico, which uh, its CEO, Mr. Ernesto, actually visited Gibraltar and made a speech during the opening ceremony about the 4.1 megawatt project that is developing at the moment at Port Manzanillo, which is on the Pacific side of Mexico. And we have EcoWave Power Gibraltar, which is responsible for this project and for the future expansion. At the moment, we're also working on a few additional uh, joint venture companies. Uh, because I think this type of structure, doing a joint venture with a local partner that knows the laws, the regulation, has the correct governmental connections, is much easier than pursuing a project on our own. Let me ask you then about wind. Is there, are there any plans for wind uh, turbines to be set up in Jib? Um, wind locally offshore is, has more potential than onshore. Again, shortage of land is an issue, bird migration is an issue, which can be managed. Of birds, no? Yeah, um, which can be managed, but again, it has to be done delicately. Um, locally, on, on land, on the rock of Gibraltar, as it were, there's not, you can only sort of factor wind in sort of some very small scale micro renewable level. Offshore wind, perhaps on the east side, is the potential, is the way to go. The department has done some preliminary assessments, but offshore wind is still prohibitively expensive at this point in time. So whilst we do realize that there is potential there, we're keeping a very tight watching brief on the market, seeing how the technology evolves and waiting for the right moment. Um, David, this is a technology which sits very close to shore uh, on, on breakwaters, but uh, competitors in the market are, are trying to, to do something further out where the waves are bigger but also presumably the, the cost of operation is also significantly higher. Yeah, there are, there are, there are, um, there are different types of, uh, of wave energy generation methods. Um, there's different locations. There's offshore, which is probably, uh, you know, two kilometers, three kilometers, four kilometers out. There's near shore, which could be hundreds of meters out. Uh, they both require you to, uh, have substantial installations in the water, divers, boats, uh, moorings. Um, in, in Gibraltar, it kind of makes it a little bit more difficult to go offshore because uh, of the boat lanes, because of the fishermen, because of, you know, just the, it, it's the Straits of Gibraltar. So you need uh, the ability for boats to come and move around freely. So installing stuff, uh, installing uh, equipment, uh, a couple of kilometers away and, and mooring it to shore and being able to notify uh, uh, boats coming by that it's there is, makes it a lot more difficult. And installing it near shore, so hundreds of meters away, also makes it difficult because uh, there's a lot of pleasure craft here in, uh, in Gibraltar. So you'd have to make sure that they stayed away from uh, uh, the near shore locations. 
um, as well as tidal energy, uh, which is under the water and operates on tides or currents. Um, that is also another type of, uh, of, uh, of ocean technology, but that could be harmful to some of the marine life and uh, once again to, uh, uh, to the boating lanes. So we've chosen and we chose this when we first started our company when we looked at different types of, of uh, renewables and particularly uh, wave energies. Uh, we decided to stick to onshore to, uh, to use exi existing structures, uh, piers, cliffs, uh, breakwaters to make it easy to install and uh, maintain and uh, as well to, you know, even though it's, it's wave technology and ocean, when we're installing our, uh, our, our equipment, we usually don't even have to step foot in the water. So we're not mooring anything in the water. Uh, we're not going into the water. So it just makes um, the whole job a lot easier for us. And that's why we uh, focus on this niche of, of renewable energy and particularly wave energy, which is strictly uh, onshore. What were the challenges? What is the significance of being able to plug back into the grid? So definitely, as you mentioned, it's the first uh, power station in Europe that does wave energy and is connected uh, in commercial terms through a PPA to the electrical grid. So it's a very significant step for EcoWave power and to the wave en energy industry as a whole. The process was actually quite easy to our surprise because this is the first time that EcoWave power connected to the grid and it is the first time that the Gibraltarian government or Gib Electric received renewable electricity to its grid. So for the first time it was pretty easy, pretty good process. I think there was a very uh, productive collaboration between EcoWave power and Gibraltar's electric authority. So at all times we were completely transparent with all the information, what are the parts that we're using, how exactly the connection is going to be made and installed and that helped both parties in establishing a connection in an easy, safe and reliable manner. Plugging back into the grid means basically that uh, Gibraltar consumers, mm -hmm. sometimes they'll switch on a light bulb at home and that energy will have come from the waves here in the Mediterranean Sea. Yes, and that's very exciting for me to think about a, a child sitting at home and watching a cartoon and uh, his TV is being powered by the power of the waves. So that's definitely a big thing and uh, I think that uh, when the power station expands and grows and uh, we will see a more significant uh, amount of population that is using wave energy for their day-to-day -day needs, I think it would be even more impressive. What is uh, 100 kilowatts of energy? How much does that power? Mm -hmm. 100 kilowatts is, uh, in average, it's about 100 households. And uh, when the consumption rates are very, very high, it decreases to obviously about 60 households. But uh, that's already good, a good step to start with. So then 50 times that is? 5,000 households which is 15% of uh, Gibraltar's uh, current energy consumption. How important is it to invest uh, time, effort, money in renewables, in making them happen, in making them cheaper, um, with reference to the, the general state of the planet and, and you know, what's been happening in recent years in climate change? Well, it, it's vitally important. And I think one of the things that Gibraltar presenced in Paris when we were there in December is that the whole world is moving in this direction. It's been more than well documented. Fossil fuels are, are not good for the planet. They're polluting. They cause health issues. And they very much have an end of life, which will be coming. Increasingly, technology, manufacturers, civil society is, is having this greater expectation on renewable energy. It is sustainable. It is the way forward. Um, and especially in urban areas, in city centers and in urban areas like Gibraltar, where we have very dense um, uh, living conditions, renewable energy is the way to go. The obvious impacts on air quality are more than well documented. Um, it's just, it's a no-brainer. Whether it's picking up a piece of garbage or, or installing a solar panel or, uh, or uh, putting three people in the car instead of driving yourself one, one way to the car, you need to do something, you need to apply change. Uh, every little bit makes a difference and we need to start now and the future for us is here is now uh, with what we've done and we'd like everybody else to 
do as little as they can or as much as they can? So it's very important, I think, for uh, the general population to understand the importance of climate change, to understand that the, our future and the future of our children is completely controlled by our ability to minimize our impact on the planet. And uh, I think it's very important also for even the general public to educate itself about different novelties in the solar, wind, or even wave energy field, and to, to understand how this system works, how this system can contribute. And I think the change starts from the bottom up and not necessarily from the governmental level going down. Because if the population is more educated and more aware of the benefits in renewable energy, then they can press the right buttons, then they can put a very significant importance on the development of renewable energy and on the development of the future of our generations. Water, wind, geothermal and solar energy are renewable resources that are not depleted when used. The EcoWave project gives us an exciting glimpse into the increasing role that will be played by these renewable technologies in the generation of electricity in the future. That's where we leave Viewpoint for now. We'll be back at the same time next week. From the whole team at Broadcasting House, thanks a lot for watching and good night.